we decide that we've got to get a deal. They'd done some stuff, a couple of tracks in Sweden or Holland or something. Then they came back and we went to uh, a studio in Soho and we did three tracks, I think. One which was Help. And I took Help to Roy Featherston at EMI. And he said, that's brilliant. Yeah, we should be involved in this band. I said, well, it's got to be an album. It's got to be an album deal. And because I've been working for American labels, I'd worked for Philips, MCA, Decca, all these American things. I didn't understand why we signed all the rights away to an English company. When what happens is if you, if you record for an album for an English company in those days, you've got full royalty in England and everywhere around the rest of it, you've got 50%. And I didn't understand that. I mean, it just didn't make sense. So I sat down with John and Tony and said, look, this is what we've got to do. First, if we get the deal, it's got to be excluding Canada, Japan and America. Now, EMI had never done that before and they weren't very happy. My recollection of that is for the first three albums they didn't get an advance but they got Canada, Japan and the USA. The, the publishing I didn't even got really involved in because the first album was mainly covers and Tony had booked Pi Studios at Marble Arch and I think we recorded it on a Saturday and mixed it on the Sunday um, which didn't cost them a lot of money in those days it probably cost them a thousand fifteen hundred pound meantime I had a very good friend called Ben Nesbitt who ran Feldman's publishing and he had Bob Dylan's publishing through a guy called Artie Mobile in America and Artie Mogul had been brought in to run this record company in America called Tetragrammaton. And he phoned Ben and said, look, I started it, we started this label. Get that tall skinny kid that I met who used to sit on your railings, radiator to supply an act. So at that stage, we were doing the purple thing. So I got Tony and John in to see Ben. And I said to them, look, this man is honest, do your publishing with him. So, Tony being what he always was, a big hearted man, he was as tight as two coats of paint, said, yeah, we'll give you a publishing if you give us £500 towards the pie recording. And Ben said, yes, but I want 2% of the record. And that's what happened is at that stage they got the best publishing deal that was being around at that time but from the records Feldman's got two percent of records and through Ben I met a guy called Louis Elman who ran a company for Jacques Delaney Lee which was studios so we moved to another studio Coming towards the end of the third album, I knew it was time for me to go. But to this day, they've never ever told me that I'm not doing the next album. 